Welcome back to Ghost of a Tale. Well, there should be a prison transport ship down there, and it certainly looks like there is, and according to Silas, and the prisoner manifest they got, Mera should be on board. Let's go take a look. I feel like it can't be that easy, but... Maybe? Ooh. I'm sorry, Mera, you're gonna have to wait one more minute. It's not me. I'm holding a candle just because I can't see very well. It's not me. <laughs> they really don't send the best and the brightest here to dwindling heights. Is that... Is that Mara? Older prisoner? Younger prisoner? Mouse. Mouse, please, my mother needs water. Okay, so this is definitely not them. Uh, please, will you fetch her some? Uh, of course, I won't be long. Wait, how do I get water? Is there someone bored? Uh, that might be water? Is there like a bucket or something? Can you... can I use a bottle on it? No. I'm using my super sense, by the way, to highlight anything usable. I'm, I'm sorry, I have no idea how to give you water. I've not been able to fetch any water. Uh, there must be a bucket of fresh water somewhere nearby, surely. Not on board. That's a chamber pot. Is there one here? Is that fresh water? Okay, if you want to try drinking it. I don't know, I can't tell. Fine sight. Mother, here, try to drink. That's it. Good. N not too much now. I thought you were a guard when I first saw you coming. How is she? She's very weak. Don't try and speak, Mother. You need to rest. I'm Tam. This is Pharaoh, my mother. Who are you, friend? prisoner like hmm I want to say a prisoner like you I'm searching for Mara but it's like I'm withholding my name if I do that uh, Tilo my name's Tilo 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 the minstrel mother this is Tilo Mara's husband I was told she'd be on this transport by all rights she should be here but at the port mother and I were going to be separated it happened so quickly Mara, she gave up her place, so I could take care of Mother. Aww. That sounds like something Mara would do. She did what she thought was right. When you saw her last, how was Mara? Bruised, but alive. When did this all happen? We left the port, so three or four days passed, must have been. Did Mara talk about the Baron and what happened? Uh, not with me. I've only heard bits and pieces since, from Mother. I see. Once she wakes, I'm sure she'll be able to tell you more. The port. That was the last time you saw Mara? 
Aye. She was put on another boat. A boat? Bound for where? Uh, I'm sorry, it was also chaotic. Uh, mother might know more. Mother? Is she alright? Uh, aye. She's sleeping now. Her breathing seems easier, doesn't it? <sighs> Look at her. She's exhausted. Until Pharaoh wakes, is there anything you need? Aye. If you can find the key to these chains, that can make Pharaoh more comfortable. We might even have a chance of getting out of here. Okay, where's the key? One of the guards took it with him. He was headed for the harbor master's office. You might find him there. Okay. I assume the harbor master's harbor master's office is the thing just right up here. Where the commander often hangs out. Is it you? Ah. Yes. Let's see if I can slip past them all. <laughs> well, okay, probably switch back now. You're back. I have the key. Good. Hurry. Unlock the shackles before the guards return. Alright, let me take a look. Ah, idiots. Mother. What good is escaping here? Where will we go? Mother, this is... Mara's husband, the minstrel. I might be old, but I have at least one good ear. I understand you spoke with her. I did. A good deal. But we'll get to that. Tamlin, take the key. We'll need it later. I'd say we don't have much time before the guards return. Let's see if we can't find a way out of this. Hmm. Perhaps you should wait and escape when the boat reaches some safe harbor. It's not the worst idea, but I think this is our last port of call before Castlebrook. Hmm. The five ports. Lake Vale is served by five great ports. Albar is the northerly most port through which all trade with Baladon is conducted. Igris is the most heavily fortified. Uh, Castlebrook to the south is the closest to the capital. Goods unloaded there are taken on by caravan across land to Dahl. Okay, so it's the closest to the capital. Hmm. Was thinking. We could add a stop to the ship's itinerary. Aye. Aye, that might work. Wouldn't the change need some sort of official approval? From some high-ranking officer, aye. The commander. Leave that to me. <laughs> Did you hear that, Tamlin? Such confidence from so small a mouse. I understand that would merit season him. Mother, please... Sorry about her, brother. It's just her way. I know a frog your mother should meet. They have a lot in common. <laughs> I can imagine. Alright then. Best of luck, brother. Okay, so where am I going to find the manifest? Find the prison transport's itinerary. Hmm... I mean, it's not on board, right? So it probably would be in the Harbor Master's office somewhere. Lovely siren, huh? Yeah, let's go back there. Ah, here it is. Transport itinerary. Return to Tam and Pharaoh. Here, I have the ship's itinerary. Good. Now let's hope there's a friendly port of call between here and Castlebrook. You must know this coastline up and down, Tilo. Where do you suggest? Oh. Uh... How am I supposed to tell? I mean, I know I have all these, like, lore entries that I've read, but these don't sound familiar. Yarden? Thrum? Actually, Thrum sounds vaguely familiar. Cadwell? Scarret? Um, hmm... 
Let me take a look at my lore entries. Huh, well I'm reading the five ports entry, and the one that sounds best is Orondus. It says Orondus to the northeast is a mere mooring post by comparison. So it sounds peaceful, because it sounds like it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, not much there. But I looked at the list of what you can say, like what you can suggest that we stop at, and that wasn't on the list. So next best guess... Um, next best guess is Skarn. Skarn is mostly populated by rodents and operates under the management of the Red Paw. It is nevertheless a fine example of a diversity of creatures working in harmony, and only rarely descends into sheer chaos when the Merchant's Guild goes on strike. The strikes are scheduled to be held twice monthly. Two times every month. <laughs> They're on a schedule. Okay, but yeah, it says... Uh, a fine example of the diversity of creatures working in harmony. That doesn't sound too bad. Is Skarn one of the options? Whoops. I just asked them what they did. Uh, acts of Sedition. We're all in the same boat. Aye, seems to be catching. <laughs> More than you know, brother. Okay, Skarn. Ah, Skarn isn't even on there. Just scare it. Where am I supposed to get this information from? It's not in my lore entries. Is there like a... Wait a minute. There's two unread books. That's right. Okay, let's let's go ahead and read those books, huh? I've left them unread for too long. Also, this the rocking of this boat is disturbing me. Let's look down. Better. So we read Unquiet Waters, A Guide to Lake Valia. Actually, I should read that again because that may say something about those places. First of Saltar. Dwindling Heights, Ratguard. Uh, nope, it looks like that's pretty much just about this place. Just about Dwindling Heights, basically. Cross Tail Hearts, a racy novel. Probably not going to help, but let's check it out. A novel by Rex Peck. Enraged, the doe flew at Rex, all teeth and fur. A broken shard of mirror held like a dagger in her rebellious paw. With one powerful arm, the handsome captain caught her easily by her slender wrist and pulled her close to him. He was much stronger than her, and she knew it. I could have hanged you for that, he smirked. Udith laughed a sneering laugh, her red eyes burning like hot fire. Do it. I'd rather die than live a moment longer under the Baron's rule. She wrenched herself from his powerful vice-like grip and stumbled, falling hard against the cell's cold stone floor. Rex moved to her his heart pumping in his muscular chest loud enough for Udith, Udith to hear, like distant drums warning of some approaching storm. <laughs> oh my god, this is such trash. His heart pumping in his muscular chest. <laughs> loud enough for Udith to hear. Oh my god. I think something might be wrong with your heart. Don't touch me, Udith hissed. And as she turned, her ruby eyes met his, challenging, piercing his soul like an explorer conquering a strange island beyond the horizon. Don't touch me. Her voice became a whisper, her ears vibrating like an unwritten invitation. All at once, the rest of the text is thankfully illegible. Minstrel's Flight, a treatise on the minstrel way of life. Oh, this is by Lulin, right? said by Gerardus Lulin. The minstrel's journey took him north through a deep valley, where not long before a battle had been fought between two great armies. The dead of both sides lay strewn about. The creature's kind is not important. At the furthest end of the valley, on high ground, stood the victor's camp. The minstrel reached it not long before dusk and was welcomed. He learned that nine soldiers there had been arrested for desertion and cowardice and were sentenced to be put to death at first light. That night the commander bid the minstrel play the fire of the immortals, both to remind his loyal soldiers of the glory of death and service of one's kind, and the deserters of the shame that awaited them in the afterlife. The minstrel agreed, as was his duty. First, though, in secret he slipped inside his loot a small pebble he'd picked up from the battlefield still hot and stained with blood. 
and then he played, just as he had been bidden, changing not one note nor lyric of the song. But the lute's tone, usually bright and full of life, was made thin and cold by the stone, and the soldiers' thoughts turned not to the glory of battle, but to those they had lost, their comrades and friends, and of the mother who would never again call her son in from the fields for lunch, nor scold him for cutting firewood while wearing his best tunic. Still, as the fire's light waned, the commander ordered the executioner to prepare nine ropes for the coming day. Yet by morning, the deserters were gone, their shackles mysteriously sprung open, though the, uh, though the only key to their lock still hung on a string around the commander's neck. The wise minstrel knows the song is not as important as the way in which it is sung. Yeah, I had a hunch. Remember that uh, coastal status report we read? I thought, I wonder if that goes over it. And it does. So, Skarn, um, 13 arrests, lots of bad stuff happening. Belquay, I don't think that's on the list. Purim's Landing. Additional night patrols recommended, so that's definitely out. Yartan on Threve. That is under quarantine. Throom. Uh, patrol reports wild sunder crabs now rampaging through the ruins of Throom. Remaining villagers have finally abandoned their homes. Uh, probably not. Uh, Panbury, Garrison Commander confirms additional forces from Yuva proving effective in quelling descent. Hmm, they're on high alert, so also probably not. Ooh, look at this, Gadwell. Red Paw presence minimal. Red Guard contingent reassigned from Godwell to deal with incident at Scarret, Throom, and Panbury. Okay, so that's where we want to go. I have a cousin who lives not far from Gadwell. Gadwell. Gadwell might just... just might do. Now we'll just need the garrison commander to approve the new itinerary. <laughs> what could be easier? Indeed. How in the hell am I going to do that? Just says have it signed. Okay. Can we... Forge their signature, perhaps? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what's gonna happen. Ah, Scow. Just the buck I needed to see. Your timing couldn't be better. Uh, is there something I can do for you, Commander? Aside from the million things you want me to do already. The Master and the Smuggling Ring. Play for me, Scow. Oh, wait. No, they've asked me to do that before. So that's not anything new. Sir, the prison transport's itinerary needs signing. Uh, good, good. Listen to this. The commander takes up his... liar.
So, and tell me truthfully, what did you think? Oh my god, that was horrible! The music playing, at least, well, some of the flute was terrible, and the lyrics were horrendous! Both just terribly written and also just a weird, disturbing ending. Just a song about how much you love someone, and then the end is, oh, and they died. Okay... Um... Your use of simile and metaphor is almost indescribable. True. Which did you love the most? The rubies glowing in the dark. Ah, a moment of indulgence on my part. And tell me what else you loved about my ode. Hmm. Your rhymes are very... bold. I know. Which couplet were you most impressed by? Um... Hmm... Your rhyming of breeze with sneeze. Ah, yes, one of my more poetic moments. It's gratifying to receive such praise from a fellow troubadour. Now, what's this? The commander takes the itinerary and, holding it at arm's length, studies it with an almost theatrical intensity. I see, I see, good, all right. Uh, God will. Aye, sir. A charming fishing port. You really should visit sometime. Tough place for the red paw now, though. With a wink and a flourish of his quill pen, the commander signs the document. My autograph. For a fan. Leave this with me, Scow. I'll make sure it reaches the transport's captain. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought. <laughs> what an amazing song. That was hilarious. Um, okay, I really, like, seriously need to meet uh, the blacksmith about this whole smuggling ring. Like, I'm going to go with... Am I going with them on the transport ship? The two prisoners that I'm doing all this for? I feel like I'm going to go with them and I'm going to leave this location and, like, never going to be able to come back. I don't know if that's true, but this is what I feel like. Any luck? The new itinerary is back in place. It's done. Well done, Mouse. Then we're all set. Uh, please, uh, now, will you tell me what you know about Mera? Aye, you've been patient enough. Please ask what you will and I'll answer best I can. Please, where was Mera taken? Where is she now? I'm afraid I don't know. Then she's truly lost. You mustn't give up, brother. Would Mara give up on you? No. No, she wouldn't. Aye, she wouldn't. She's better than that. She was put aboard... The Rathskellen, for what it's worth. The Rathskellen. Aye, she's a cargo ship working out of Skarn. She goes all over. Uh, Skarn, what's the description for that one again? It's the largest of the five ports adorning the shores of Lake Valia. Okay, that's all it says. It's the largest of the five ports. Okay. You're certain. I remember her from my time on the docks. She was a handsome vessel once. One of the first Baladonian hoys. Ah, oh, right, the Badgers of... Bal Baladon? Amazing with wood, right? It's not much to go on, I know. Pharaoh, do you know why Mara and I were called before the Baron? Since Great Barum... That, that's Barum versus Baron. The Red Paw must have been rounding up any mouse considered a threat. Great Barum. What's Great Barum? Minor garrison of the Red Paw, situated in northern Meridia. The fortress at Great Barum was recently razed to the ground during a protest by the local mouse population. The protest was sparked by the death in custody of a mouse arrested for insulting a member of the Rat Guard. It later emerged that this mouse's name was... Uh... Myarsh. 
and that, far from insulting the guard, he was simply stating for the record his name. Oh, my arsh. My arsh. The fire was blamed on the sons of Asper, and used as justification to round up any mouse suspected of sympathizing with their cause. Great Barum. What happened at Barum? You haven't heard? The Red Paws garrison there was burned to the ground. They're blaming it on mice. Your wife came to visit me at the Freehold, no more than a year ago. You'd met Barrow before? Only once, and very briefly. She never told me her name. It was not long after Tamlin had been arrested in Whirl. The riots at the port there. Riots? The protest was peaceful, until a red paw went in with their clubs and their shields. Tamlin, that's enough now. Mara brought me a message from Tamlin's friends. A message? Aye, informing me of his arrest. Thanks to your wife, I was able to arrange his release. We owe Mara a debt of gratitude, and we're not the only ones. You never knew about any of this, did you, Tilo? Oh, remember, um, I, I think it was in the very last entry in that book of, of flowers, talking about Mara and Tilo and how they met, and I think it was the last entry, 16 out of 17, that mentioned that Mara had been growing distant and going for long walks out at night, right? Coming back super late? This must be what Mara was doing. Helping the rebellion and, and stuff like that. Okay. We we played at a festival near Warall, no more than a year ago. Aye, that fits. It must have been when Mara was given the message. Huh. Excuse me, I need to go. Tilo, wait. I can see you're upset. You must wonder why she would risk so much to help others. Well, I mean, not really. She just had empathy. Whatever the reason, we'll be forever grateful that she did. Aye, you're a lucky mouse, brother. Oh, God. God, that was so loud. Lucky? I wouldn't call any of us lucky. How was it you were able to arrange Tam's release after the riots? Well, some years back, the Baron's convoy was ambushed on the Pesa Road. Ambushed by whom? There are those in the Red Paw would like to see Osdrick's seat on the council empty. The Baron was raised in Meridia and is not unsympathetic to our plight. He was brought to the Freehold, badly hurt. Osdrick stayed with us nearly six weeks, uh, six weeks while I nursed him back to health. If it was down to me, I would have let him rot. Then you would have been hanged in Moral with the others. Well, asking why they support the rebels seems kind of pointless. I mean, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Because the Baron and the Red Paw are a bunch of fascists? Uh, why do you support the rebels? The sons of Asper, brother. Call them by their name. The Council of Asper. The founding father of Meridia, Asper, was a great orator, renowned for his ability to turn discord into harmony with his words. It was Asper who negotiated Meridia's peaceful transition from monarchy to republic, and later established a great council, on which sat, as equals, a representative of each creature capable of thought and reason. The council still sits, and still bears Asper's name, though since the War of the Green Flame his kind are not permitted to attend. It is for this reason the mice of the northern provinces have adopted his name for their uprising. Until our voices are heard is their motto. You must know the lay, the poisoned cup, yes? Aye, of course. Then play it, please.
After a thousand years, this is how our kind are still thought of. I don't really like either of these options. It's not my place to rewrite history. Oh, I'm not suggesting it should be forgotten, but still, we're punished for it every day. Why should we suffer for our ancestors' sins? The bell. The ship must be leaving soon. Aye. The crew will be on their way back. Will you not come with us, Tilo? We could use a buck like you. They won't notice one more mouse aboard. Thank you, but my best chance of finding Mara is still here. Very well. Farewell, Tilo. Find Mara. Whatever it takes. And keep fighting the fight. I'll see what I can do. That's the spirit. Make your mark, Tilo. Make a statement. Burn their colors. Set the red paw aflame. And make sure the commander knows whose handiwork it is. Aye. Make mischief, brother. I'll do it. I swear I will. You're a good mouse, Tilo. Now go. So where do we fit in, the, in with the quests? Talk with Silas. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to go back to Silas. Actually, you know what? Before I go back to Silas, I'm going to go back through here and see if I can find the blacksmith, because I really want to find them. I was supposed to talk with them, like, forever ago, so I'm kind of worried that I'm leaving that quest undone. So, hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.